Hello, my name is Melissa Daniels, and this is strabismus to stereopsis. Strabismus is when your eyes are not pointing in the same direction. And in this channel, I'm trying to help you learn how to overcome that, to get your eyes straight and working together to improve your depth perception. Right now, I am doing a question and answer series where you submit questions and I send you answers through videos. So today's question is about how to improve depth perception. And this is coming from somebody in vision therapy. So we're gonna go into a little bit of details and some techniques to help improve depth. Before we jump into that, I wanted to make sure you know you can go over to learn.strabismussolutions.com for different resources to help you on your journey. Whether you're just getting started and need a quiz that can kind of help you know what direction to go, or you're in vision therapy and you're ready for the course on mastering peripheral that is gonna help you go to the next level, you can also sign up with, with me for a Zoom call and we can talk all about where you're at and how to reach the next goals that you might have. So be sure to check that out, learn.strabismussolutions.com. So this question comes from my friend Karen, hmm, she got a hard last name, Rinaldini. It's interesting, you know, I've seen her name, last name a million times, but never said it. So she requested techniques to increase depth perception. She has been in vision therapy for a couple years and she is looking to improve that depth perception to increase the space that she sees. So I'm going to give three tips that I think would really help. I will say the mastering peripheral course that I offer is probably going to contain the best description. I give a lot of different techniques for this exact thing. Improving that depth perception, it's all about peripheral and seeing the space between objects. That is gonna be the best, but in addition to that, here are some ideas. As I said earlier, seeing the space is what is gonna increase depth perception. With strabismus, a lot of times we just see objects, a hand and a hand, and we don't necessarily see the space between the hands. We just see that there are two hands and our brain goes from object to object and skips everything that's not an object or something palpable that you can hold on to. Because we do this, we miss a lot of depth perception because in order to see true depth and the distance between the two hands, you have to see the space between the hands and how much space there is. And being aware of that space is it something that is a total shift in our mindset and our brains and how we see. So there's a few different places where I practice doing this that I found to be the most effective. One way that I like to do this is using different types of plants or trees, especially a nice big tree where you can kind of, it's been nicely pruned so that you've got some space between the branches. It's not just like a big mess. Um, looking through the branches and seeing the space between branches, between leaves, and even like, especially if it's like a breezy day, I like to lay underneath the tree and look up. And again, it's the whole time, all I'm doing is, can I picture the space between me and the tree, me and this leaf, me and that leaf, is that space different? And trying to kind of give a quantity to the different space. Trees are great because there's so much stimulation going on there. If you have a vectogram, such as this, that you can use. Um, we're gonna pretend, okay? Are you ready? So pretend this is a branch of the tree. I'll come and put my vectogram right in the middle of a branch. And so there's leaves coming off of this branch, right? And as I move the vectogram and I'm using the glasses, that vectogram kind of moves through the space and I can compare it to the different leaves or sections on that branch of the tree. So I really like taking an eye exercise, like a vectogram, and because you know, they always say open your peripheral and see the space and try to see it floating behind or in front of, and sometimes it's, it's hard for me to see that, but a, a baby step is to take it somewhere where you have a lot of different places to compare it, like a tree. So I love doing that, that's one of like, the best ways that I've improved that depth perception so that when I take this away from a tree, I start seeing the space there. And then as I practice and practice it, then when I start driving or taking a walk, I can start seeing that space because I've practiced it so much. So trees are a great one. That doesn't work. Another one that has been super helpful for me is going to an aquarium and 
at the aquarium, I like put my face right against the wall so that I'm like right in front of the water. And I think of all, instead of space, now we have water. And so there's something to look at. So looking at fish to fish to seaweed or coral or whatever it is that I'm looking at. And all of those things have space and depths. And I picture the water between everything. The water is filling up that whole tank. Can I picture myself as if I were inside that tank and there's the water going through the tank? I'll do the same thing even if I'm in a real space. I'll pretend, okay, this is an aquarium. It's full of water. Where is the water? How much water would I have to swim through to get to the camera, my webcam, right? How much space is there? And can I piece that together? So that's another way of kind of doing the same thing is through the aquarium. Are you noticing a pattern? There's not like a specific exercise. Like Yes, all the exercises with stereo and depth and Brock string, all of those, but really, to really expand your depth perception, you've got to start seeing the space. That is so huge. And the third one that maybe you're not already doing, I'm trying to think of things that maybe you haven't tried yet. Um, When you're driving or walking, to think of motion parallax. So as you're walking through a hallway, are you, can you see the walls of the hallway kind of moving against you? Or as you're driving down a road, can you see the lines of trees going past you? This can really help. It's actually a monocular cue. So we have binocular cues that help us judge depth perception. And we have monocular cues that help us judge depth. And motion parallax is actually a, a monocular cue. It's something that you only need one eye to see the motion parallax. But... Even though it's a one-eyed thing, it can help substantially with that binocular depth perception because it's engaging both sides, right? So you're kind of dividing your awareness and keeping that awareness as you drive. And that is going to help your depth perception. Even if it is a monocular cue, you can strengthen those ones that you already have. But just being aware of things moving past you and things moving in the background. When I move to the right, other things move to the left and it's moving opposite of me, right? I've got some of that going on as I I talk in the camera and being aware of that motion all around me has really helped fill in the depth around me and the space that I'm in. Okay, bonus. Okay, I have to give one more. And, And this might not be for everyone, but this is a huge one for me in vision therapy. And I don't know why. It's just magic. Okay, just try it. Go ahead and just try it. So... You know, you're doing your eye exercise, you're in vision therapy, and they're like, picture the space, open your peripheral, and they give you all these things, you know, you're in an aquarium, and picture the water, and all of that, and it's all fine and dandy, and it's, everything's kind of in front of me, but one tip I have is I try to think of what's behind me, and sometimes I have to use a mirror to do this, but picturing that space behind me, so If I was in an aquarium, would there be a fish swimming behind me and is there water behind me? And there's something magical about that. I'm not even looking, right? This is totally just a visualization thing. As soon as I picture the space behind me, it's like the room locks in and I became a part of a room instead of looking at a room. And that that space behind, I'm telling you, that will change your depth perception. So... Hopefully, Karen, that is helpful and you maybe have, hopefully one of those things is something you haven't tried before and you can try it and maybe it'll help you improve your depth perception a little bit more as you work in vision therapy. So good luck with that and hopefully this can help somebody else as well. If you have any questions that you would like me to address, be sure to put that in the comments and hopefully we can get to it before this series is over.